it's war time. Gather the troops, yeah, it's war time. The most high is gonna have mercy on you, black people, especially if you return back to him. It's war time. We are gods on this earth, we are God chosen people. Christ, baby. Words. You say that don't matter? It's all a job is to watch you and to warn our people. Wake up from the lies that you're in. We must return as the Israelites, because that's who we are. You are now tuned in to Wartime Radio Show. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Hey, welcome to Wartime Radio, WPJM 800. My name is Officer Yuwana Thun, and on my left... Officer Yuwana Thun Kassad. On my right... Officer Malachi. And our reader today... Officer Yainai. All praises to the Gaddai. Hey, give me Romans 15 and 4. Today's show is going to be called As the Church Failed the Black Community. Mm. Mm. We're going to get deep today. Read that. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Read. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Hey, all praises. So today, we're going to give you some scriptures so you might have hope. Hey, we're going to start off with Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8. As the black churches failed the black community. But somehow, some way, the black community, who has all these great pastors and all these churches on every single corner, our community is in ruins. Crazy. Our people are at the bottom in everything. We have pure, we just left a community that's what? On the decay, on the downside yesterday. Right. And a church literally, like, some some blocks, two churches. Right. There's, those churches should be institutions of learning, or places where black communities can actually make financial investments, build businesses. This is what your churches should be doing to help you to you know to wake up out of the decayed state. Because the black community, we're at the bottom. Ooh. Should not your churches help build you up? Give me that. Uh, read what we got. Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries. Against many countries. So the prophets of old, they, they prophesied against many countries for, for a reason. A lot of all these countries had our people in poverty, had our people in slavery. They was coming against the children of God. Read. And against great kingdoms. Against great kingdoms. This is a great kingdom. This is the number one kingdom on earth. But yet, I haven't heard any preachers whatsoever speak against America. Read. Of war. Of what? Of war. So we should be prophesying of the upcoming wars. Because Christ did warn us there should be wars and rumors of wars. But the only thing I hear is being preached about is prosperity. Read. And of evil. Of what? Of evil. Evil. There's much evil in the black community. But yet, somehow, the motto is, you can't judge me, brother. Right. <laughs> you can't judge me. It's not Bruh. about changing at all. Right. You know, come as you are. Come as you you'll are. You'll be good to go. Come as you are. We're going to sing some songs. And you know what? We're going to put it in Jesus' hands. Right. We don't speak against the evil. Read. And of pestilence. Of what? Of pestilence. Pestilence. Wow. It's not a pestilence going around. We, uh, it's a pestilence going around in this great kingdom that we can't even say the name that, that's of it. That's sad. Yes, sir. That's you can't sad. even say the name of the radio of the pestilence that's going around that they want you to take to be cured from that will not work. You may not even be able to say shit. Right. Got it. Mosquito bite. Mosquito, Mosquito bite. bite. They want you. To, they want you, you know, we got you to create. Create code words to speak of a pestilence that they speak about on the radio, I mean, on the television every single day. Right. Who does that? Uh, that great kingdom called Babylon. Oh, my fault. Called America. 
These are the things that's going on right now. Where is the prophets today that's doing these things? I'll tell you where they're at. 1823 Greg Street, Columbia, South Carolina, called IUIC. That's right. right. Come on down, and we're going to prophesy all these things to you. Hey, let's go to uh, Matthew 24 and 4. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. He said, Take heed that no man deceive you. Read. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. So he said, Many gonna come in his name, saying, Now I'm Christ. No, proclaiming to be Christians. Now, Christ prophesied of this thing. And if you really want to know if the Bible is a true book, let's pull this article right quick on how many denominations of Christian are there. Let's get that right quick. Because he said many. So, you know, we might be thinking, you know, it's just a few. It's just, just a few. But let's find out how many is it. You got that article? Pull it up. Well, while they pull it up, man, um, you're dealing with the, the different denominations, right? Right. And if Christianity was something to where it was supposed to benefit our people, it shouldn't be so confusing. It shouldn't cause confusion. Get, right. Let me get Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Because the, the thing is, a lot of people in our, in our Christian churches, we hold up the Bible. We act like we believe in the Bible, especially the New Testament. But then how do you explain all of the different denominations in Christianity that's used to cause division and to cause confusion amongst the people? Read that, Ephesians 4, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Right, so the true religion, so to speak, is supposed to be about keeping the unity in the bond of peace, the unity of the Spirit, the Spirit of the words that are written in this Bible here. we we'll read on. There is one body. There's only one body. Meaning there's only one body of Christ that was sacrificed for us. Read. And one spirit. There's only one spirit that you should have. So you should not have a seven-day Adventist that actually worships and they say they keep in the Sabbath on Saturday. But then you have a Baptist, Pentecostal, and all them other people doing it on Sunday. There's only one spirit. Read. Even as ye are called in one hope. I will, of your, go ahead. In one hope of your calling. There should only be one hope of our calling. So why is there so many different doctrines in regards to how you make it to the kingdom of heaven and who's supposed to be saved and who's supposed who's coming to save us read and how you get saved there's only one hope if you keep the commandments the most high god is going to send his son jesus christ down to save his people that's what the bible says right read one lord it's only one lord jesus christ read one faith it should only be one faith that we all have read one baptism is <laughs> only one way to baptize according to the Bible. But all these different religions have so much confusion. Read on. One God. is only one God. And father of all. So there shouldn't be no Trinity doctrines or different variances of doctrines, right. different beliefs and doctrines. If we all are following one spirit. Read. Who is above all uh -huh. and through all and in you all. And he's in us all. So. That right there, just seeing the different denominations in Christianity, the different doctrines that are taught within those denominations, and the fact that none of those denominations deal with keeping God's laws, whose God's chosen people is, and the color of Christ, that shows you something is wrong. Right. Those things are written in the Bible. Right. Hey, you got the article ready? All right, go down to where, um, okay, go ahead. Read that. Why does Christianity have so many denominations? Let me read that part right there. Yes, sir. There are more than 45,000 denominations globally. How many? 45,000. Yeah, one What? And 45,000 different denominations right. of the Bible. It's only one doctrine. You got 45,000 denominations. So when Christ said there shall be many, right. 45,000 denominations of Christianity. Continue reading. 
followers of Jesus span the globe, but the global body of more than two billion Christians. How is many? Two billion Christians. There go your deceivers. Read. Is separated into thousands of denominations. Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Baptist, Ap Ap Apostolic, Methodist. The list goes on. Hey, let me say my favorite one, Baptist, because that's many of you right now listening. Read. The list goes on. Estimations show there are more than 200 Christian denominations so, in the. So there's 200 Christian denominations right here in America. So we don't have all 45,000, but they got 200. So we're no different than anywhere else in the world. We were all oppressed and all fed the same lies. Read. In the U.S., and a staggering 45,000 globally, according to the Center for the Study of Global Christianity. So why does Christianity have so many branches? A cursory look shows that differences in belief, power grabs, and corruption all had a part to play. That's heavy, right? Hey, that's the part that's heavy. Read that last part again. A cursory look shows that differences in belief. So there's different beliefs in Christianity. They're not walking in the same mind, same body, same spirit. Right. Read. Power grabs. What? Power grabs. That's what's all about. Uh, ever since the white man has came into power, they fought amongst each other for power. And they did it and they're doing it now through the different religions. Right. All these different religions fall up under really one umbrella, and that's the Catholic umbrella. They right. all stem from that. And all of them are in on it for as the money-wise. That money is funneled up through what they call a pyramid. And so all these different denominations, that money eventually ends back up into the hands of the Pope. And that last part. And corruption all had a part to play. I all had a part to play. Corruption. So go back to Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Uh -huh. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, uh -huh. and shall deceive many. They're going to do what? Deceive many. So there's been major deception throughout the whole earth. And guess who's part of that deception? The same churches that's leading the black community. That's the reason why the churches have failed the black community. Because they are partakers of the corruption that Christ spoke and warned us of. Matter of fact, jump down a few verses uh, where Christ warned us about the false prophets. Verse 24. Read that. Verse 24. For there shall arise false Christ. They're going to arise what? False Christ. Now, 45,000 different denominations, and nobody speaks of the fact that every image that's portrayed in these churches is someone that's false. Cesare Borgia, or the white image of Jesus Christ, is in all 45,000 different denominations. Right. And not one religion, not one branch of these denominations says, hold up. That ain't what the Bible say. The Bible Ooh. describes him as a black man with woolly hair that That's was so right. dark that he looked like he burned in a furnace. Right. And no one says nothing. Not one single branch. Right. You don't even hear the black churches speaking against it. You don't even hear the black churches standing up for the black man. Right. The greatest black man who ever walked this earth. They will not defend and stand up for the true image of Christ. Now that's a problem. That's the reason why our people don't see Christ in themselves. Right. That's the reason why we kill each other on the streets. That's the reason why we treat our women wrong. Right, officer. And another thing is that they tell our people to come to come as they are. Okay. It's okay if you come in as a homosexual or whatever you come in as. It's okay. The Bible don't tell you that. So where are they getting this garbage from? 
And, you know, Christ didn't just make up that verse. All throughout the Bible, the Bible is warning you of false prophets. Give me uh, Jeremiah 29 and 8. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 8. Read it out. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. The God of who? The God of Israel. That's you so-called blacks, so-called Native Americans, and so-called Hispanics. You are the children of Israel. Read. Let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. This is a commandment that was given. He said, don't let them deceive you. So the only way that you cannot be deceived is by actually going into this Bible and hold the men that you're following accountable. Right. See if they follow in the word of God. But, but it takes, you have to read the Bible first. Right. And that's when we, when we deal with our people, we don't say, don't just do what we tell you. Read it for yourself and determine if it's real or not. <laughs> Let me get that real quick, officer. Revelations chapter one. And during slavery, we had somewhat of an excuse, right? Right. We were put to death if we tried to read the Bible specifically. It may have got a few lashes if we tried to learn how to read in general. Right. But now, if, if, now the Negro ain't like he's going to drop dead if you start reading. <laughs> right. Now we, now we die spiritually if we try to pick up a book and read. Read that. Revelations chapter 1, verse 3. Read it out. Blessed is he that readeth. That's the only thing that's going to protect our people and and guide our people in these times we must pick up the bible and actually read that thing it says you'll be That's blessed right if you read it read and they that hear the words of this prophecy go ahead and keep those things which are written therein. it means the things that you read keep them the things that you have read make sure that you hold on to that you read about feet a brass burned in a furnace hair like wool that's what you read that's what you hold on to not what your pastor says Read that again. And. Yo, finish it up. For the time is at hand. Because these are the last days. Right. The time to wake up is now, so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. <laughs> All those different doctrines. There must be. It, in sports, they say if you have too many of one position means you have none. The team has like three point guards. We have three point guards, and they all can play. That means you have not one good one. The thing about these doctrines is that you have all these different um, denominations, and none of them is the real dom denomination. None of them is the real doctrine. That's all I got. Hey, you know, and they say our communities are poor. Our communities really are not poor. We have poor spending habits. We, because you know why? Because we haven't put God first. By not putting God first, we're able to fall under these devils that they don't put up amongst us. Matter of fact, give me um, Isaiah 59 and 10. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 10. Bring it out. We grope for the wall uh, like. My bad. Uh, what, maybe 56. Yeah, 56 and 10. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 10. His watchmen are blind. So what is a watchman? A watchman is supposed to watch for danger. But we Ooh. are your watchmen. This is why it's called wartime radio. We are under attack. And we're watching for the souls of our people. That's but, right. But you're going to churches on Sunday. And the Bible says your watchman is blind. Read. They are all ignorant. They are all what? Ignorant. They're ignorant of God's words. They're ignorant of the judgment of God. Read. They are all dumb dogs. They are what? They are all dumb dogs. A dog's supposed to bark and warn our people. The watchman's supposed to warn the people. But they're not warning you. They're not warning you that you're in the midst of sin. They're not warning you why we're in these conditions. They're not taking you through these scriptures so that you might have hope. <laughs> Read. They cannot bark. They cannot what? They cannot bark. I haven't heard any of them barking. I haven't heard any of them out there on the streets teaching our people. They're sitting up in those churches, passing around that collection plate, getting rich off of our people. Read. Sleeping. They what? Sleeping. How can you warn the people if you sleep? How can you warn them? That's your watchman? Somebody that sleep on the job? Come While on your now, enemy dog. is planning an attack, the Bible said uh, the devil 
Hey, he's always looking to destroy souls. Right. He never takes a break. He never takes a rest. But I watch him and they sleep on the job. Read. Lying down. Uh huh. Loving to slumber. They love to sleep. They love to sleep. They never gonna fight for you. They never gonna warn you. Because through your ignorance, they get paid. Right. Read. Yay. They are greedy dogs. They dumb, greedy dogs. How can pastors walk around with Jets, Bentleys, Mercedes, while the, the people are poor? Read. Read. Which can never have enough. They can what? Which can never have enough. You know who they got that from? They got that from their enemy. All they doing is emulating the enemy. The enemy didn't want 13 colonies. The enemy wanted the whole kit and caboodle. They want the whole world. They're still waging war on the earth right now. Guess what? They want every dime out of your pocket. They don't care if you can't pay your light bills. They don't care if you can't pay your rent. They still want your money. Read. They are all Bre greedy dogs. All right. They are all greedy dogs, which can never have enough. Read. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They don't understand these scriptures. They don't understand these prophecies. They don't understand the judgment that's coming. Read. They all look to their own way. They all do what? Look to their own way. That's the, bro the problem with the black community now. They only care about their self. Right. Read. Everyone for his gain. Everyone for what? For his gain. The only thing they worried about is their own pockets. That's it. They don't care about the brothers. You know, the love thy neighbor. Where's the love of thy neighbor at? When all they're doing is stuffing the money in their pockets. Read. From his quarter. Hey, all they worried about is their own home. That's it. Simple as that. You got something right. else? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, can I get Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15? Since we're talking about pastors, who are the real pastors? Who are the real pastors? Whenever you're ready, officer. All right. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart. The Most High said that I will give you pastors according, according to his heart. All right? Read. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. What is this knowledge he's going to feed you with? Let, let's go to Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. Let's see what this knowledge is. Because our people, I mean, hey, we are in a terrible estate now. And the time is coming near, so we're going to have to do something. <laughs> So that's why we out on the streets. We are teaching our people. But when we go out there, they look at us like, like what? we don't using, hey, like, hey, it's just like we don't even belong. But they don't know that the message that we are bringing them is what they need to get salvation. That's right. But come on. Malachi chapter 2, verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. The priest's lips should keep knowledge. What is this knowledge? Go ahead. And they should seek the law. The what? The law. The what? The law. To seek the law at his mouth. At his mouth. So when we are out on the streets, that's what we are bringing out, the laws. Many of our people don't know that, yo, we don't supposed to lie. We don't supposed to steal. We don't supposed to do these things to each other. But we do. Right. We are kill each other and everything. And that kill, hey, is hey, it's certain actually it's levels to it. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we're teaching our people, but they don't want to listen. Right. And so then, then it's like the people don't understand is that the reason why we're destroyed and the reason why we're going through all this and in, in these different religions went over on slave ships is because we broke God's laws. Right. right. So the pastors are supposed to be bringing us back to that thing. Go, let me let me get you done, officer. Yes, sir. Let me get Lamentations two verse fourteen. Because what the officers is bringing out is the the root cause of all these things is because we went against God's laws. And our pastors are supposed to be sanctioned by the Most High God and His Son, Jesus Christ, to come out and bring our people back to His laws. But look what our pastors are doing now. Lamentations 2, verse 14. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 14. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. Our prophets, our spiritual guides, our spiritual leaders today have seen vain and foolish things for us. Read. And they have not discovered thine iniquity. They're not telling us that we're in the midst of sin. 
And they didn't discover our iniquity. They're not correcting our people to do what? To turn away thy captivity. To get us out of this captivity that we're in, this oppressive system, this oppressive state, this, this bottom of the barrel state that we're in. The only way to get out of that is by turning away from iniquity. Our prophets are supposed to be teaching that thing. Read. But have seen for thee false burdens. False burdens. Christmas is a false burden. Every single black household in the ghetto is feeling the stress now of Christmas time coming up. They're taking out payday loans, maybe stealing, maybe robbing, all stressed out, depressed. All that stuff goes on in the black community. Right. Those are false burdens. And, and you know the reason why we still stay in this state is one of the major things that they have not taught our people. They have not gave our people the understanding what sin is. Right. We ask our people every single day when we out there teaching what is sin, and our people have no understanding of what sin is. So let's get the understanding of sin. Give me First John three and four. First John chapter three verse four. Bring it out. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. So whoever commits sin, you break God's law. That's what sin is, the breaking of God's law. Finish it out. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the breaking of God's law. And go back to the limitations. Sin is the breaking of God's law. Our people have no understanding that what they're doing is actually going against God. Right. By not knowing the things of God, by not knowing the will of God, that we're supposed to keep his laws is the reason why we can't turn away our transgressions. <laughs> Read that again. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 14. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things uh -huh. for thee, and they have not discovered thine iniquity. They have not discovered the sins therein because they will not open this book and read for themselves. Right. That's the reason why we haven't discovered anything. Read. To turn away thy captivity. That's the reason why you're still in slavery. And so you know what our people do? They lie amongst themselves and say, I ain't a slave. Right. Yo, you a slave because you're still in your sin. <laughs> right, and you damn sure is a slave every time you pay your bills and got to right. scream, don't, hands up, don't shoot, and black lives matter. Got it. Hey, you might not know you a slave, but your enemy do. Right. And he treats you like one because he make you beg them for every single thing that you want. Right. You want equality? You got to ask him for it. Hey, are you kidding me? You want to be <laughs> hey, You want to be called a man? You have to tell him, hey, I'm, I'm a man. A man. I'm and he a man. still don't treat you like a man. He don't acknowledge that you're a man. He still <laughs> right. say you're a monkey. Here right. is the ultimate one, officer. <laughs> they put out a mandate saying, yo, you got to get this shot. If you don't get this shot, you can't you're fired. That. Right. They have dominion over your body. So that's showing you that, yes, you are a slave. They have dominion <laughs> over your body. They have dominion right. over you. Look, yes. they got dominion over your children. They can come right in the house and say, you unfit parent, and take your child. Right. All you did was discipline your child. Right. We understand, Finish brother. Finish that off real quick. All right. But I've seen. But have seen vain and. The, thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee. You know what they say? They see prosperity. Right. They see a great future for you in America. Vain and foolish. That's vain and foolish. Read. Get rich or die trying. Go ahead. And they have not discovered thine iniquity uh -huh. to turn away thy captivity. Read. But have seen for thee false burdens mm -hmm. and causes of banishment. They keep you in the state. So that you don't make it into the kingdom of heaven. Right. They don't want you to make it. They don't want you to make it. No, hey, the white man never wants his rulership of this earth to ever end. With that, we're going to take a break. And we'll be right back with you. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. My familia is the
Welcome back to Wartime Radio, WPJM 800. Hey, we're going to dive right back into it. Has the churches destroyed the black community? Hey, give me Romans 10 and 1. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Bring it out. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Who might be saved? For Israel is that they might be saved. That's who needs saving. The so-called children of the so-called black Americans, so-called Native Americans, so-called Hispanics. You are the children of Israel. You're the one that needs saving. Read. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. Hey, nobody has the zeal of God more than our people. Right now, I guarantee you, if you walked up in those Sunday churches, they in there screaming and falling out and acting a fool. They got the zeal of God. Read. But not according to knowledge. But not according to knowledge. They're just as ignorant as they want to be. <laughs> and you know why they stay ignorant? Because they refuse to open up the Bible and read. They trust. Listen, you couldn't call yourself Creflo Dollar and expect me to trust you. You couldn't call yourself <laughs> Creflo Dollar and expect me to give you some money. But you see how people are blinded by his appearance. How he, you know, he wears a nice watch. He has a car, so they feel like what he's doing is prospering. Right. So they feel like that's the prosperity that they need. So they need to do what he teaches them, so they can get to his level. Stop it. Get some help. Hey, read the next verse. Verse 3, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness. So our people are ignorant of God's laws. That's the problem. We're ignorant of the righteousness of God because we haven't bothered to sit there and find out what actually God wants us to do and how he wants us to live. We actually sit there and go off our own understanding and say, why would God do this? Why would God do that? We sit there and act as if we wrote a book somewhere. Right. Read. Ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. What do our people do? Establish their own righteousness. That's what our people do. They establish their own righteousness. We'll tell them, hey, Sabbath is Saturday. They say, hey, I can worship God any day of the week. Right. No, you don't. Right. You don't worship him none of the week. How do you love God? Just praise him. Right. <laughs> That's, not Bible, that? That's not That's not in the Bible. I man. pray. I praise him. Right. God don't hear your prayers because you are a sinner. You do not keep any of his laws. <laughs> so why would he listen to you? Read. Establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. That's the problem. You will not submit yourselves to the righteousness of a God. Our forefathers didn't submit themselves to the righteousness of God, so we ended up on a long boat ride never to return. Well, obviously, they may not know what the righteousness of God is. Right. So let's pull that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what, what, what does the Bible say? Remember, blessed is he that read it. What does the Bible say the righteousness of God is that our people refuse to submit themselves to? Bring it out. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Bring it out. And it shall be our righteousness. It, says it shall be our righteousness if we do what? If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he hath commanded us. Our people don't want to submit to God's laws. Why do I have to change the way I eat? Why do I have to change the way I dress? Why do I have to do all these? Why do I have to... Keep the Sabbath holy. God doesn't want me to do that. You're ignorant of God's righteousness. And you've created your own righteousness by saying, come as you are. God loves you as you are. And all this other foolishness that goes on in the Christian church. And that's why there's a Christian church on every block. Right. And our communities are getting worse and worse. It's dyke. And it, hey, it's one on every block because you know why? They know it's a sucker on every it's block. Sucker on every corner. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Give me uh, Micah 3 and 11. You said it's up deep. Micah chapter 3, verse 11. The, the heads thereof mm. judge for reward. That's, that's your pastors. They judge for reward. Mm -hmm. Read. And the priests thereof teach 
for hire. They do what? Teach for hire. The only reason why they up in them churches is to get paid. They're not trying right. to lead you to salvation. They haven't told you how to get into the kingdom of heaven. They haven't told you the things you need to do to get out of slavery. They haven't told you the things you need to do to go back in the rulership of this earth. Right. Right. They haven't told you how to stop being a baby mama and a uh, baby daddy. Right. No Ooh. solutions right. at all. None. They gave you no solutions to the problems that plague our community. Ooh. Read. And the prophets thereof divine for money. I didn't say it. God said. Right. Get mad at him. Right. Read. <laughs> Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, is not the Lord among us? Ain't that what they say? <laughs> God is in there. Right. Like God was in there today. God was right. with us today. Right. Did you feel yeah. that spirit, brother? Right. Yes. Yes. Look, matter of fact, you'll give them God's words and they'll say, brother, you ain't got the spirit. Right. But you're keeping all God's get laws. Get mad at us. Bruh. They get mad at you for telling them the scriptures and then tell you, you know what? The devil know the Bible too. Yeah. Then why you don't know it, devil? Exactly. Come on, my dog. <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on with our people. They mad because you know the Bible. You know the laws. You trying to give them love to help them out and they get upset with you. But they don't want your love. They want their love of the money. Right. They say the Lord is amongst them. Yes. They got the spirit. They, that's what they say. Right. Finish that out. None evil can come upon us. That's what they say. <laughs> no evil can come upon us. Right. They don't see that them in the ghettos, them getting shot down in the street, evil is all around you. Right. And those be the ones, didn't they just have a, we keep talking about it, but didn't 200 pastors come and gather together in Georgia because evil came amongst us? Right. And that, and they, but they say no evil is going to come amongst us if we keep doing what we do. And then you get brothers going out there giving you the solution, which means that you have to change your lives, and you don't want it. Hey, we got a video bruh, bruh. of some prophets that's divine for money and teach for hire. Let's see how they living. Pull that video, that beautiful bean footage of the men they like to praise. Man, they, they got that video quick. Hey, all praises. Play Every that Sunday, thing. the Reverend Creflo Dollar hacks him in under the World Dome, his 8,500-seat church outside Atlanta. The pews are filled, and so are the donation plates. The Word of God is the gateway to the world of wealth. The man whose last name Hold literally... Hold stop. <laughs> the man said the Word of God is the gateway of wealth. I thought the word of God leads you to the gates, <laughs> to the pearly gates, right. and to the kingdom, if you follow him. But he says it's going to lead you to wealth. You know what God he's serving, though. Right. We, we know what God blesses you with, with the, the power and rulership and the riches of this world here. Right. You just got to worship him. And you know the sad part is he, he's teaching the, uh, the poor people about wealth. He's not teaching them how to manage money, how to invest, teaching them economics. He's teaching them that, you know what, give me your money and the Lord going to bless you with wealth. Bruh. And they still broke. They still in the ghettos. They still poor. But even if they were rich, let's just say that the poor people were rich. It'd be a bunch and of I'm, Negroes riding I'm around in Cadillacs. Uh, poor and, you know, like means of money. Let's say that they were rich. Like, all those people that he teaching were rich. They're still not getting into the kingdom. Right. They're still they not getting They don't in. care you know about no kingdom. Yes. It's beca just, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. They don't, they, our people don't really understand. Where's that script at? It says, um, I have not seen or ear heard the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Right? Because our people, we don't know God's, how to love God. 1 Corinthians um, 2, verse 9. Read that real quick, man. Because so, our people, they say they want the kingdom of heaven, but then when you, when you ask them what the kingdom of heaven is, they don't know. You're just flying around like Tupac and um, I ain't mad at you with a white suit on de dealing with your dead family members with angels doing something in the cloud somewhere. They don't understand what the kingdom of heaven is. Read that real quick. Bruh. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Bruh. But as it is written... I hath not seen, uh -huh. nor ear heard, mm -hmm. neither have entered into the heart of man. He hasn't entered into the heart of man what? The things which God has prepared for them that love they him. don't understand Ooh. the level of the reward that you would get by loving God. 
Right. That's right. And knowing how to love God and showing God how you love him. The bishop brought it out in class. I ain't even going to try to be on his level with it. But this get, how do you love God? Real quick, real quick. How do you love God? There's so many levels to this thing. If, you, if our people really understood what it meant when you kept his commandments, what true prosperity was, and the reward you get for loving God, there'd be no issue with, sister, just put on a skirt. Right. Brother, Ooh. stop sleeping around and take care of your family. Right. Don't Ooh. shoot that guy. It's that simple. <laughs> Read that, man. First John chapter five verse three. Go ahead. Go. For this is the love of God. This is the love of God, so that you can get the things that you can't even think about. That you can't even fathom what God is, has in store for you if you love Him. Read that we keep His commandments. Oh, you keep the commandments. Read on. And His commandments are not grievous. It should not be grievous for you to. Put away shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster and eat a chicken sandwich. <laughs> or eat a, a cheeseburger or a hamburger or do something else besides the abominable foods. It shouldn't hurt you to do that right. if you love God and you really wanted what God has prepared for us. <laughs> hey, finish that video. It's the gateway to the world of wealth. The man whose last name literally means money in the United States often suggest to his 30,000 parishioners, the more they give, the more God will deliver financial blessings to them. Which is uh, basically the Christian gospel turned on its head, turned upside down, and it's uh, to honor Kreflo Dollar, not so much about honoring God. Despite his critics, Dollar's popularity and wealth have continued to grow, and all that revenue is tax-exempt, with little or no way to know how much he has or how he spends it. What that means, is it sounds technical, but what that means is that the church, he doesn't have to give financial information to anybody, and so therefore he doesn't. But there are ways to get a glimpse of some of that wealth. From where else? The heavens. This is a satellite view of Dollar's Georgia home, worth more than $2.3 million. These New York records show Dollar and his wife sold their Manhattan condo for $3.75 million. And that's not all. Bentleys, Rolls Royces, uh, corporate jets, uh, $23,000 commodes. In 2007, the lavish spending even caught the attention of the U.S. Senate. Just think of a $23,000 marble commode. A lot of money going down the toilet. And, and the Senate the Finance Committee launched an investigation for, for into the finance. Those that don't understand that. <laughs> hey, check this out. Even Esau is like, that is spent $23,000 for a to toilet. Wasted money for a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Come this on, is, now, this dog. is your pastor. You can't make this stuff up. He must, he must got some gold plated butt cheeks, bruh. <laughs> he got twenty one thousand dollar toilet. Come on, hey, go back to that, Mike. Give me that one more time. Jeez. Three and eleven. Yes, sir. All right, Micah chapter three, verse eleven. Bring it up. The heads thereof. Judge for reward. Read. And the priest thereof teach for hire. Uh-huh. And the prophets thereof divine for money. Hey, Ooh. you can't tell me this Bible ain't real. This That's Bible right. describes your pastors. And guess, all these pastors ain't on Creflo Dollar level. They only striving to get there. Right. The ones that's not there, that's where they want to be. That's what they're doing because, trust me, none of them speaks against Creflo Dollar. None of them. They all got the same agenda. They all got the same agenda. They all in it together because they want to be just like their oppressor. It's so guess who, they, guess who they're oppressing? You. They're oppressing you now. They're taking advantage of the poor. They're taking advantage of the blind. They're taking advantage of the needy. That's it. All to put money in their pockets. But yet they will say that they love God uh -huh. with their mouth. Can I get Isaiah 29 and 13, please? Let me get this scripture right here. Because uh, many of our people, um, we looked at Creflo Dollar and the T.D. Jakes and all these different people before we came into the truth. But I'm not going to say I was giving my money to them. We just looked. You know what I'm saying? Some of, um, some of us just looked at them. But, you know, some of our people that is in the truth, hey, they gave money to them. But... We got to understand something, man. We got to understand this. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. Bring it out. 
Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with this, their This people, okay, this people is Israel, okay? This people, go ahead. Draw near me with their mouth, saying, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. But the minute you give them a law, they turn it up their lips. They, hey, they, hey, like they give you the stink face. Right. They give you the stink face. I'm telling you. Come on, read. And with their lips do honor me. And with their lips, they do honor the most high. <laughs> At least they think they are honoring the, mo mo um, the most high. Go ahead. But have removed their heart far from me. Their mind is not on the most high's commandments. And when the prophets bring it out, we get rebuked. Right. Ooh. We get rebuked in the streets. We get the police call on us. Hell, they, hey. They, they tried to do it yesterday. Yo, they did it to us yesterday. Lady, lady, said, lady said, if you don't have a, a permission to be out here, just pack up. Come back when you when you do. Right. Pack up and leave. Just do it. Okay, order, lady. Bruh. Good old Allen. Good old Allendale. Right. And this right here is the worst. This place right here is like 13, what, what, three to five dollars below poverty. The, below the, the poverty level. The prophets actually went to a city to teach the people, our people, the word where an elderly woman was gang raped by some little nappy head Negroes and then they beat on the husband that was trying to protect his wife. Right. We came out there to give those people the word and so our people can get out there at the cave state they in and the black woman <laughs> Thank you. came <laughs> against us. The arch nemesis. Uh, she came against us and wanted us to pack up and leave pack because up. we didn't have a permit. Yeah, she was across the street selling Christmas trees. Right. <laughs> Yo. This woman across the street selling trees. And the fact that she was a, a pastor. Right. She right. was a pastor and wanted us to put the Bible up and go home. You can't make this Tell stuff us go up. home, bro. Go hey, home. Like what y'all are saying is offensive. And we're just speaking the Bible. Deuteronomy 28. It is offensive to them, though. Hey, give me, while we right here, just give me Isaiah 30 and verse 8. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 30, verse 8. Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. Now, you know, we don't even realize how deep this is. <laughs> hey, we're so wicked. God just wanted this to be recorded. He said, I'm going to make sure that this record of our evil and our wickedness lasts forever and you know the enemy they done did everything to try to hide our greatness on this earth they don't <laughs> chopped off the noses of black statues they don't <laughs> lie to us in, in school they don't lie on history they don't lie about science they done did everything to hide the greatness of the black man but the one thing they have yet to destroy is this book because God said he was going to leave this here forever right. and ever. That's, That's right. right. That's, we, right. That's right. We can read now, Massa. Right. We can read now. Look, they, hey, they say, you know what? We ain't going to destroy it. But we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna make you ignorant. We're going to keep you from reading. Well, God put the spirit on you to make you think that, hey, we would never rise back up. <laughs> but guess what? We're here today. And we can read, Massa. Read. That this is a rebellion. Rebellious people. Our people are rebellious. Ooh. A pastor came across the street and told us, put the Bible up, go get a permit. Read. Lying children. Our people are what? Lying children. They profess it with their lips. Lying. Lying children. They say they love God, but you give them a law, and all of a sudden, hey, brother, the law is done away with. We can't follow all those laws. Read. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. You know, it'd be one thing if it was the law of the white man, because we know you don't like to be law. We don't like to keep no laws. Half of you right now probably in the house smoking weed, getting high. You know, but hey, God said you won't even hear his laws. You don't even have fear of breaking God's laws. Read. Which say to the seers. We the seers. Right. What do they say? See not. Man, go on with that, man. We tired of hearing all that Bible talk. Right. Read. And to the prophets. Uh-huh, what they say to us? Prophesy not until it's right things. Now, I don't want to hear about I can't wear no dress. I don't right. want to hear about, man, what's wrong with smoking weed? Yeah, what's bro, wrong with this? Who are you to judge me? Right, who are you to judge me? <laughs> You're not perfect. Are yeah. you perfect? Yeah, uh, like, they, that that's foolish. their favorite word. Right. Are you perfect? Right. I'm striving to be. Thank you. I'm striving to be. Bruh. Read. Prophesy not unto us right things. What do they say? Speak unto us smooth things. They want some lies. Yes. That's all they want. 
Guess what? That's why Creflo's dollar rich right, right now because he know you Negroes like lies. Yeah, Creflo gave you that smooth <laughs> stuff. The That's word T.D. Jakes. Gateway to wealth. Right. Oh, man. T.D. Jakes smooth. rich because you know what? He know y'all like lies. I, every single pastor, hey, the women jumped in on it. Even when the Bible tells them that, hey, you shouldn't be behind no pulpit teaching, they jump behind it and guess what? Because they know you like lies too. Right. That's our people. They love lies. They you, hate the truth of this Bible. You know why? Because they hate being free. <laughs> they don't want to be free. They love being slaves. They man. love being slaves. That's why they think saved is like some spiritual salvation that's right. going to, they don't, how you, do you cry? Look, this is, this is the Negro right Stop here. Stop it. They want to be Get free. Oh, put it this way. They want to be saved and take the people that enslaved them with them. What do you think them same people would do if they could be saved? You're going to be back in captivity again. You're going to be right <laughs> like, back in doing? captivity. Because they're going to say, you know what? I had it made when we was in rulership. Why are we going to let these Negroes rule? Hey, they gave us all their money, all their time. They built up our communities. They built up our homes. They worked in our businesses and our factories. All I had to do was go hang out at the beach and chill. Send my kids to college. You know what? That's all they do is set back and get paid off of you. And they taught your pastors how to do the same thing. Create lies and watch them Negroes give you money. That's it. Bruh. You got something, officer? Matter of fact, read the next part. Prophesy deceit. What they want? Prophesy deceit. And the Bible ain't lying. They want lies. Read. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. I don't want to hear about that guy in that Bible. That guy in the Bible be killing people. That's the mean God. <laughs> they love Cesare Borgia. They love that white image of Jesus Christ. Just like, hey, what was that? Uh, good times? Hey, she was oh, like, Florida. Hey, yeah, Florida said, don't take down that picture. That picture been in my family my whole life. That's the only Jesus that I've known. Serious with Michael. And and she was serious with Michael. <laughs> and guess what? Our people got that same spirit. Especially our women. Well, oh, yeah. it, our people. Let's leave it alone. All right. Our people Ooh. got that same spirit. They want to sit there and hold on to that false image. They want to hold on to those lies, and they don't never want to let them go. You know, right now, you got the, this is the season to be jolly. Right. They can ignore that, you know what? Christmas is pagan. They're going to ignore that, hey, when we tell them Christmas is the celebration of you going into slavery. Right. They won't believe it. No, they can't believe that. They can't believe it, but guess what? It's in the Bible. Give us Revelations 19. Verse 10. Verse, uh, Revelations 11 and 10. Okay, 11 and 10. Ain't that out. Revelations chapter 11, verse 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. They rejoiced over us. They rejoiced over us going into slavery because we was once ruling them. So, of course, they rejoiced when they became in power. And what did they do? Read. And make merry. They got toe up. They got drunk. They partied. And they have a, memor uh, a memorial of it every December. Read. And shall send gifts one to another. Guess what? Them gifts used to be you. They used to tie a little bow around your neck, drop you off over at Master John's uh, plantation for Christmas. Right. You was a Christmas present to their children to be a lifelong slave. Hello, Have boss. them a servant for Hello. life. Hold up, officer. So you're telling me that every time we go out and buy gifts for uh, this wicked holiday that we are actually commemorating our ancestors being given to another people. That's exactly what we're doing. Destroyed. Just Damn. think about it. We just celebrated the genocide slaughter of a whole well, nation right. of people and didn't think nothing wrong with it. That's what? how much blind we are to religion. Our churches, every one of them, I guarantee you they say Happy Thanksgiving. Damn. Happy Thanksgiving. Right. The Come slaughter on now, of 77 million Native Americans. That's what you just celebrated. You just ate some turkey and lamb and ham and all that good stuff in the celebration of killing God's chosen people. And what did God tell you about that? Give me Colossians 2 and 8. Peace. 
He's saying that the black church has destroyed our community. Hey, <laughs> destroyed it a hundred times over. For real. Read. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Bring it out. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. The straight up lies. Read Listen it again. again. Read it again. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. So Woo. guess what? That's your churches. They've destroyed the black community through philosophy and straight up vain deceit. Right. That's Read. Right. After the tradition of men, guess what? We don't follow God's laws. We don't follow God's holy days. We don't keep his commandments. We follow traditions of men. You Woo! taught it to your children. You taught them Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, 4th of July. You get them all happy and worked up. You give them gifts. You give them food. You give them toys and presents. Bring it out. You taught your children to hate themselves, to hate God. Read. After the rudiments of the world. These are the things of the world because the world hates the God of Israel. Read. And not after Christ. They don't follow who? So Christmas don't and have nothing to do with Christ. Not one single thing. Wow. And but yet our people call themselves Christians. If you really want to be a Christian, you're going to have to do what the Bible says. Christianity That's right. has nothing to do with Christ. Right, man. right. Oh, God. Christianity, you know, the, that many that should deceive. Guess what? Let's show you how to be a follower of Christ. Give me that in first, Peter. First Kings chapter 8. First Bert. Peter. First Peter. Uh, second Peter. Uh, yes, two, and, first gotcha. or second? Yeah. two and verse 21. First Peter chapter 2. Verse 21, for even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, uh -huh. leaving us an example. So Christ actually left you an example of how you should worship God. That's right. How did he do it? Read. That ye shall follow his steps. You should follow his steps, not the steps of your pastor, not the steps of your lying churches, but rather the steps of Christ, who did what? Who did no sin. He kept the laws. Right. If you, you really want to be a follower of Christ, you're going to have to keep the laws of God. Ooh. And when you follow Christ, how can your community be destroyed? No, your community shall inherit the earth. That's right. Hey, with that, hey, this has been Wartime Radio. Officer, you want to talk aside? Um, Officer Malachi, Officer Your Honor, the last Mohican. And with that, we're going to say Shalom, Most High Christ bless. Hey, don't follow Christmas. Stay at home. Hey, open up the Bible and do what the black man never does. That's read. right. Read, read, read. Shalom. 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 Yeah. Thank you for tuning in to Wartime Radio Show. Follow us on all social media platforms at IUIC Columbia, South Carolina. Join our congregation every Saturday at 4 p.m. Located at 1823 Greg Street, Columbia, South Carolina. For more information, call us at 803-708-4861. At extension 237. Share our show with your friends and family. And thank you again for tuning in to Wartime Radio Show. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana 
Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth